hi guys welcome to electronics to the point in this video we will see the working of traveling wave tubes traveling wave tubes are nothing but slow wave structures we shall see first firstly how why we have to use this slow wave structures see as we are considered in uh, clistrons as they are resonant cavity structures they cannot support a huge bandwidth of operation as they are designed on narrow band operation okay so for narrow band operations nothing but for continue wave radars it can be used but when we go for higher bandwidth utilization we cannot uh, implement these reflex clistrons or uh, two cavity clistrons or multi cavity clistrons so we are going for traveling wave tubes and moreover the short transit time inside clistrons cannot give an effective modulations so in traveling wave tube we make the electron beam to interact with the rf field for a quite long time in the whole tube whole length of the tube but whereas in the clistrons we see that rf field is stationary in the cavities and whenever the electron gets nearer to the cavity gaps the electron gets accelerated thereby we achieve the velocity modulation but what we do in traveling wave tube is we are considering slow wave structures as helix so that it whenever the electron enters into the helix we in, make the rf field to get interacted throughout the tube so that effective modulation can be achieved okay now see what is it difference between clistron amplifiers and this traveling wave tubes or TWTs clistrons are essentially narrow band devices as they utilize cavity resonators to velocity modulate the electron beam that is over a narrow gap whereas this TWTs are broad band devices in which there are no cavity resonators okay the interaction space in TWT is extended and the electron beam exchanges energy with the rf wave over the full wave length of the tube in clistron the electron beam travels and rf field remains stationary but whereas in twt it makes use of distributed interaction between electron and traveling wave tube to prolong the interaction between this electron and uh, rf field we have to consider and it is necessary to ensure that they are both traveling in same direction and with the same velocity what this rf field and electron should travel in the same direction and with same velocity so that prolonged interaction can be achieved the electron beam travels with a velocity governed by anode voltage initially whenever the rf field propagates with the velo and the rf uh, field will propagates with the velocity equal to velocity of light but by introducing to traveling wave tubes where helix helical structure will be present this makes this rf field to get retarded in order to interact with the electron beam as anode voltage it is a slight deflection causing the electron to move but where when this rf field it has huge velocity right so we have to retard this rf field so we consider the helical structures in the traveling wave tubes to retard the rf field and make electron beam to interact with the rf field so normally slow wave structures are utilized to retard the rf field like helix or a waveguide arrangement can also be taken this is the actual theme of twt why we are considering the TWT means it is a broadband amplifier okay now coming to the constructional features of traveling wave tube see traveling wave tube is nothing but a closely enclosed glass tube it consists of an electron gun same as uh, we use in the clistrons also we use electron gun right where the electron beam is excited from the cathode and the anode will induce some velocity to the electron beam in this glass tube there will be a helical structure which is wound like a spring it is a conducting spring it is made to in retard the rf input given to the helix 
due to the turns in the helical structure it makes the rf input to get retarded as rf input travels with the velocity of light this windings will make rf input to reduce its velocity so that it can get interacted with the electron beam which is coming in the axis of helix helix is nothing but a loosely wound thin conducting helical wire which acts as a slow wave structure see in this helical structure we see that this spring like structure it is wound closely it and the distance between the two wounds can is considered as pitch and this whenever we see this spring from input side or output side we can find a circle it, it, it resembles a circle so we consider the circumference of the circle and we attribute this to the helix so here r is the radius of the helix and this uh, this radius is constant all over the helix throughout the glass tube so this makes the twt to have an edge over other slow wave structures okay now whenever the ele electron beam enters into the helix there will be an magnetic focusing electrodes will be present which makes the electron beam to travel in the narrow beams as we know ele electron is a charged particle it has tendency to disperse so this magnetic field uh, focusing electrodes will allow this electric electron beam to travel in the narrow path inside the helix whenever the rf input is induced in the helix uh, this rf input will be traveling with the velocity of light and we know that this helix is retarding the rf inputs velocity so we can say that output rf output obtained let us consider the velocity of output be vp is equal to actual input velocity is velocity of vc into pitch of the helix by circumference of the helix as this helical structure is acting upon the rf input and it is making the velocity to decrease so the effect of helix can be explained from this formula vp is equal to vc into pitch of the helix by 2 pi r okay and the main part of the twt is it has an attenuator which is placed at the input side of the helix because as the principle its principle states that this electron beam and the rf input which which was retarded they both have to travel in single direction same direction and in the they have to be in phase so that this electron beam gives the energy to helix and the uh, strengthened amplified output is obtained at the output whenever there is this uh, these are out of phase they have to be neglected right so we are using this attenuator to attenuate this out of phase signals and the main purpose of this attenuator is we in twt we have four modes of operation the uh, last mode we should we don't want to use in this twt is backward wave oscillation mode this backward backward wave oscillation mode will make standing waves inside the tube which makes the amplification of twt it makes the amplification to get decreased this when the amplification uh, characteristic is affected then there is no point of using this twt for the amplification of this sig signal so this attenuator is a we use aqua solution which is coated on the inside these glass walls of twt so that the out of phase component of forward wave will be attenuated and the effect of some spurious signals which is causing to backward oscillations and 
these standing waves are obtaining so these are also attenuated by the attenuator which is which is an aqueduct solution coated inside the glass walls of a helical structure that and in the twt okay now coming to the operation point of view whenever the rf input is applied it travels through the helical structure by inducing axial field inside this helix this rf field travels with the velocity of light and the axial field generated inside this helix it travels with velocity of light multiplied by pitch of the helix divided by circumference of the helix because this helix the spring like structure is occupying throughout the glass tube right in twt so actually what it is doing it is retarding the rf input so we can say that there is some effect of this helical structure upon the rf input that is that effect is represented in the form of this formula that is output velocity of rf input is defined as vp considered as output is equal to actual input velocity vc traveling with light i have said velocity of light so vc into pitch of the helix divided by 2 pi r okay pitch is nothing but difference between the two wounds of a helical spring and uh, when we see this helix from one dimensional point of view that is or from input side or output side we can find that it is like a circle so whenever there is a circle like we take the circumference into consideration so we are taking this effect in the form of this formula when velocity of electron beam traveling through helix approximately equal with the axial field this electron beam gets interacted with the rf field that is in the axial field so at this point this electron gives the energy to helix so that signal grows and amplified output is obtained at the output this is how the attenuability operates now let us go somewhat deeper see here in the helix circumference r is nothing but radius of the helix and it is constant over a range of frequencies and this characteristic of helix structure slow wave structure enables twt to have broad broadband operation okay hence helix since it provides the least change in phase velocity with frequency so it is pre preferred over other slow wave structures for twt we can use another structures also but due to the helix characteristic as it is not changing for frequency phase velocity is not changing for throughout the entire range of frequencies so twt is preferred over other slow wave structures see actually twt is nothing but it is the limiting case of multi cavity crystal in order to address the problems we have faced in uh, clistron we are uh, we have designed the traveling wave tube okay traveling wave tube has very large number of closely spaced gaps these gaps are nothing but the helix windings these windings are in, see consider a spring it will be like entire closely they have they will be wound right this is the cl spa closed space gaps we are referring in this point the phase change that is and we have said that helix there is no phase change will be constant so this characteristic is important in twt okay see as in reflect as in crystron amplifiers or oscillators the bunching is the main characteristic of the electrons okay same bunching also takes place in the twt but how it takes place we shall see from this diagram see consider the rf input and we can see that whenever the rf field is decreasing there the electron bunching is taking place see in this entire for an, for a full cycle we are getting the at retarded velocity we are getting the bunching of electrons how it's getting we will see see whenever axial field is zero that is rf is not applied this electron beam does not get affected a velocity of this electron beam does not get affected and it travels with a normal speed 
that is the anode induced velocity anode it has some uh, slight voltage so it induces with uh, some velocity so it is traveling with slight velocity okay now whenever the rf input is positive peak see from this diagram whenever the output is uh, or rf input is uh, the cycle gone positive this electron beam entering towards the electro uh, this rf input it gets accelerated see the first electron already went and now second electron coming in the, from coming uh, towards the rf input where now rf is acting on it it travels with much velocity and it tries to overtake the already gone electron okay now see now rf input is decreased that is in the negative peak what happens is here due to the negative input rf input and the char electron is also negative so the retardation of this electron takes place now what happens is the previous electron we have considered the positive rf input inducing the velocity uh, electron to travel with much more acceleration what happens is we this electron tries to overtake this in this process what happens whenever the rf input coming uh, retarding what we can see is a bunching of electrons is taking place okay this bunching makes the electrons to give the energy to helical structure so that output of the helix is taken as rf output the signal grows with much more strength and the amplified output is obtained this is how the operation of twt takes place now in our next video we shall see the modes and the velocity modulation equation of a traveling wave tube okay thank you the broadband nature of traveling wave tubes finds its importance in many applications now let us see the applications of twts it is used as a repeater amplifier in wideband communication links and coaxial cables especially in the long distance telephony second application due to long lifetime of this tube traveling wave tubes are used as power output tubes in communication satellites okay now third importance twts are used in airborne and shipborne pulsed high power radars ecm ground based radars also use this traveling wave tubes due to the high power and due to broadband operation the long distances also covered easily by the twt so we are using this in airborne and shipborne where the accuracy and lifetime is important in these communications so we use this twts in high power radars third application continuous high power twts are used in tropo scatter links okay in tropo scatter communication satellites use this twts due to high power of this and the large bandwidth the satellite communication takes a good importance of this twts thank you